Hello YouTube friends. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, but I've seen the weather forecast and later in the week, uh, today is Saturday, and but later next week it's going to get colder. And so today's the perfect day to just do an inspection of the hives. Uh, I'm sitting here, I can see one of them over there. <laughs> the bee just flew, <laughs> flew right past my head then. And um, I can see a lot of activity at the mouth of the hive. That's the top bar hive, which is very experimental for me this year. Uh, it, it, it looks like there's a lot of activity going on in there. But the, the one I really want to look at is the one down in where I call my apiary, because um, that's what it's called. And that's where the one hive, the, the one successful hive that I got through the winter in that area, uh, that's where that is. And I just really want to check today to have a look at the health of the hive. Come on. Um, I just want to see, well, I want to see quite a number of things. So I find it quite hard to film when I'm inspecting the bees, but I'm going to try today. Uh, I'm just going to try and set the camera up. So. I film all of these uh, little videos for you guys on my phone, which means that as soon as I've got my gloves on, I can't actually do the touch screen. So I've brought this camera out with me today. This is my other filming camera, and I think it's got a full battery. Uh, and I can turn this one on and off with gloves on. So I'm going to try and set it up so that I can set the camera up so that you can see what I'm doing and if I manage to get some film I do and if I don't then at least I've tried but this is what I'm going to do today she's a skitty cat isn't she come on get out of the way there good girl so the first thing I've got to do then is light my smoker actually that's the second thing I've got to do the first thing I've got to do is get myself into a really good headspace because if ever you go and inspect the bees and you're feeling rushed or uh, cross about something or anxious or worried they'll know they'll pick it up and so I was inside earlier on uh, you know, having just looked at the weather forecast and I thought this is a good day to do the bees am I in a good mood to do the bees I am and I'm feeling really at peace with the idea of, of going down to open up the hive and see what's going on down there but if I wasn't feeling that way I wouldn't I wouldn't do it so that's the first thing you have to do. Second thing then is to light the smoker. And so I use uh, newspaper, uh, bits of old uh, egg box. And then what else have I got in here? Dry pie cones. So I'm going to, I'm going to, come on Rita. I'm going to light the, uh, all I really need here. I've got my hive tool. This is a great piece of kit. It's, um, So this end here is great for, because what the bees, oh, I love bees. I'm gonna talk about bees a lot, aren't I? The bees stick everything together just to make it all kind of like uh, secure for themselves with something called propolis, uh, bee glue. Propolis, propolis has got a lot of really good health giving properties. Um, and well, that's another, th yeah, that, uh, a lot of medicines, uh, alternative medicines have got propolis in. And so collecting propolis is a good thing to do. I'm not doing that today though. So this end here then helps me to crack open wherever the bees have stuck together with propolis. And then this end here helps me to um, loosen off the frames if because there's a, those 11 frames in the box there. And, it, and this end will help me to loosen off the frames. So I've got my hive tool here which is great and I've got my smoker which I'm going to have a go at uh, just getting a really nice steady fire in there so that um, the smoke kind of uh, settles the bees down. I, I think the theory is that they think that they think they're on fire so uh, they um, they start eating the honey in the in the colony in order to move it away. And while they're doing that, they're less interested in um, stinging me. Still, I'm not going to give them any opportunity to sting me 
because I've got my bee suit on. I've got my uh, Wellington boots that are stuck inside my bee suit. My bee suit's stuck inside my Wellingtons here. And what else have I got? Now, you can get special beekeeping gloves, but I use yellow washing up gloves. It doesn't matter that they're yellow, but I use washing up gloves because um, the bees don't sting through it, but also I just need that dexterity when I'm working in there. And sometimes the bee gloves are just too too thick and too, um, it's too hard to do any manipulating in there. So I've put a tiny little bit of fire in here now and the bellows here help the fire to get going really well, but I want a really good fire in here so that I haven't got to stop halfway through and light it again. So I'll just put a pop of pine cone in the top and I'm going to give it a bit of time so that it actually, I get sometimes, and that's the other thing, if you're a little bit impatient, um, I, I can be a little bit impatient. Let's be truthful there. And I think, yes, yes, that's going fine. That'll be okay. And then the fire goes out in my smoker and I'm left without the smoker. And I'm down there with my gloves and all my kit on. And what I've got to do is relight my smoker. So I'm going to spend a few minutes just getting this properly, uh, properly going. Um, so, yeah, that's all I've got is um, egg box. It's very good egg box and pine cones and just not filling it too much. Let's see if that's enough. And I'm just going to let that form a good load of embers inside. Now, um, something that the person I got my bees from, she was, uh, they, there was a couple, very keen on the idea of putting lemon balm in the top of the smoker because that kind of cools the smoke down a little but also the bees quite like the taste of the not the taste of it the smell of it and another thing that uh, she advised me to do was if you have lemon balm is to sort of um, wipe your hands uh, your gloved hands on the lemon balm now I don't think I've got any growing yet because it's what are we April the 25th so there's no, um, I haven't got any, but I might, um, there's loads of other stuff growing down there. And it might be that I put a little bit of greenery in the top just to cool the smoke down a little bit so that it's not too hot. Interestingly, that those people who I got the bees from three years ago now, in the very, very heat of summer, she, Carol, she advised me not to use smoke at all, but to use a very fine spray, water spray. And I do that in the in the in the heat of summer. I mean, it's hot today. It's not that hot. Okay, so this is looking good. And the one thing about um, doing this on my own, um, it's always good if somebody knows that you're down doing the bees. And now in this lockdown situation, nobody does. So I always used to tell my next door neighbour. Um, I'm just going down to do the bees and I would always, when I'd finished, I'd come back and I'd say, I've finished now. So I might actually send Anna a text. <laughs> There's a thing about having, um, let's move that there, two people. To do your bees is, uh, this is a great suit. It keeps the, the, um, the net keeps off my face and my neck. But it's handy to have another person just to check that you've got no um, zips undone or no holes anywhere. But I haven't, so I'm just going to be super mindful. So that one zips together there and then there's this little Velcro thing there that fits on there. And then we're going to have to change cameras now because I'm going to have to turn this one off. So with a bit of luck, I might be able to film on here uh, seamlessly. Um, this is a camera I used to use all the time, but then we developed a bit of a problem with it going out of focus. And that was a real nuisance because um, I would film for ages and then um, play the thing back and there was absolutely no, the whole thing was out of focus. So I'm going to turn the phone off now and we're going to make a, start on filming on just here now. 
but for now we're filming on two cameras so now we're filming on one camera so we're on this one now and I've got everything I need but what I need to do now is put my gloves on now bees they don't really want to sting you but you know inevitably you do get stung and this is the place where a bee might quite find itself crawling up there and getting really stuck. Now you might think that what I'm about to do is completely over the top belt and braces. But I stick this, the cuff to my glove. And what this means is, I don't, I don't worry at all about getting stung if I've got myself if I know that I've covered every avenue so that's stuck down now no bees gonna get through there but if you look at if I put this one on and show you if I stick my hand up there like so I mean and this is all loose there's loads of space for a bee to get through there so I just spend a couple of minutes doing this so that I can then forget about it. The nuisance of it is it's hard to get it off at the end. And don't do it too tight as long as you'll cut your circulation off. Okay and I know you know as I say that might seem a little bit over the top but I don't need to worry about my wrists now. Right then so let's just check put a bit more egg box in this smoker and we'll go
Well, until I put that on the computer and edit it and see what um, how I managed to film that, I won't know whether I've got any pictures that would be worth looking at. Um, but um, that was a good a good inspection of the hive down in the apiary. Uh, I saw a lot of good things that I wanted to see, so. Um, there were a lot of bees, which is great, because if you think about it, we're at the height of the day, and so the bees are out foraging, but there are also a lot of bees in the hive, so that was great. There were lovely bees. Uh, Carol, who I got my bees from, she, she, every time I say, she still thinks of them as her bees, you know, we're I'm into my third season now. How are my bees, she says, and they kind of are her bees, I suppose. And so I... Um, I'm always at pains to tell her how well they're doing and she was always really interested in whether they were still black bees or not. Uh, black bees are our northern bee, our native northern bee, not the very bright uh, yellow, almost wasp-like colouring that um, sometimes bees can, that can get bred into bees. Uh, and it, the, the, obviously the, the bees that are best for your situation are the ones that are, are locally good. They're black bees. They're really um, friendly and easy to handle. I know I had my tape and my all my gear on, but when I'm dressed like that, I don't have a single issue about handling the bees, not one. And I think they, they definitely sense that. Yes, of course, I had my good smoke. That was great. Uh, but, um, oh, you. <coughs> but, um, what I was looking for then, I'll show you what I was looking for. I'm always looking to see if I can see the Queen and I never can. And I, I think um, she's quite hard to see. I mean, some people have got a real knack for seeing the Queen. I don't wear my glasses when I go down to look at the bees because it's just like one extra thing. So I haven't got my glasses on. I've got this though. Elementary dear Watson um, <laughs> magnifying glass. But instead of looking for the Queen, I'm looking for evidence that the Queen is there and the evidence is there that she is laying eggs and you can see grubs and larva and eggs in the cells and you can, what I also saw there which is very very pleasing I saw a lot of capped um, worker baby bees so the Queen will lay in these uh, cells in the hexagonal cells and um, and then the um, worker bees come and feed those tiny eggs and then grubs and larva. And then uh, they cap, cap that over and the bee embryo gestates and then works its way out of the, uh, out of the um, cell. Now I saw a lot of worker, capped worker bees, a lot, many, many frames of that. But I also saw some 
capped drone cells, which are bigger, they're sort of more bulbous. And I, I also saw one queen cell, which is a bit early, but I saw a queen cell. Now, the drones are important for fertilizing a queen. And so they need to be in the hive. They don't need many of them, uh, but you do need a few. Uh, their only purpose is to mate with the queen, but quite interestingly, not that queen, not the queen that comes from that hive. I'm, I'm wondering if today's the day I tell you about the, the, the drone congregation site. So interesting how, how that whole thing works. But let me finish telling you what I saw down in the uh, hive there when I was inspecting the hive. So I saw lots of capped worker and I saw some stores. So the way that traditionally they'll do it is they'll, they'll, the queen will lay in the middle of the frame and then round the edges, there's loads of pollen and nectar and then honey all gets stored around the edges of the frame so that the worker bees who are looking after the new baby bees uh, have got the, the food they need to feed them. So you need to, that's the best thing to see on frame is the central area occupied by um, either eggs or larva or capped brood and then round the edges of the frame um, food to feed them with. And I saw lots of that and then this one little area of about, I don't know, 50 drone cells maybe. But what I did notice in the, so that was in the bottom box, a big deep box, which is called the brood chamber or the brood box. But then in the top box, which is um, where the, um, they store honey, because really all a bee wants to do is um, get itself through the next winter. So they put lots and lots of stores down. And I come along in, my, in, the, in the artificial way that a beekeeper does and takes those stores away later in the year. But I do need to see that they're building up plenty of stores. And what I saw was a lot of activity in the brood chamber and not much in the super. So I did what I've read about. And I uh, so it, between those two boxes, there's uh, the queen excluder, which is that green mesh thing, which allows the worker bees to get through really easily. But the queen can't get through because she's too big. Uh, and so the queen excluder prevents the queen from laying eggs in the top box so that if you do extract honey from that box, it won't be full of uh, grubs and bees and you know it won't be full of eggs that the queen's laid because you don't want to contaminate your honey with uh, the queen's um, re reproduction so that's what the queen exclude is all about but I've been reading more and more that uh, I want to establish this colony it's got a lot of bees at the moment but I want to give them more space uh, so that they feel like the queen feels like she's got more laying space so I've taken the queen excluder off which means that she might move up into that top box now and start laying in there. And, and there's a, a couple of reasons why I've read that that's good. Um, that box was pretty full. Uh, and when all those worker bees emerge, uh, there's an opportunity there for the hive to think that they might split off and go their separate ways and then swarm, take half the bees away and swarm and leave the other half. So you, you're depleting your numbers of cells, of, uh, of, of bees. So by giving her another box of, uh, so that she has access to it, I just took the queen excluder off. She can go upstairs now and lay upstairs if she wants to, um, which means that we'll have a much, much stronger colony. So if by the time they do decide to swarm, there'll be far more bees. And if I catch that swarm, I'll have two really, really healthy colonies instead of one. You know, the worst case scenario would be that there were, it was a, a middling sort of hive that swarmed and left behind a sickly load of, you know, sort of half a load of bees and I lost and I lost the swarm. That would be the worst case scenario. Best case scenario would be that I allow her to move up and lay in the top box, make a load more worker bees, and then either practice swarm prevention measures or force an artificial swarm. I'm not a good enough beekeeper to know what I'm talking about here. Or just watch daily in the swarm season for a swarm and catch it. And I've got my new yellow painted hive here. Plus I've got one empty hive down there, uh, which I could um, 
I could house a new swarm in. So that, that all in all was a very successful inspection, much more successful than last time where I discovered that I'd lost one of the colonies. So then because I was all kitted up and my smoker was going really well, so then I came up to the top here and looked at the top bar hive. Now the top bar hive is a very experimental thing for me. I'm not quite sure um, what I'm doing with that. The theory is with the top bar hive, is um, the theory is that the bees live so the bees go into the uh, entrance way uh, here and they start to build their brood, ch brood chamber uh, and lay and the queen will lay the eggs and the workers will look after the the eggs and they start to build it and like this so this is the entrance way and the brood chamber starts here and then the further back you get and they, they, they build their own honeycomb down, which is, there's no frames in there. So they just build more and more, the more the queen lays eggs, they accommodate her until eventually that whole top bar hive is full. But all the honey is at one end and all the bees and the broom chambers at this end. Now it's lively and healthy and loads of bees going in and out. I have no idea what I'm doing with the top bar hive. So what I've decided is and I decided this last year as well. I'm not even going to try and harvest any honey from that. I'm just going to leave that hive to let them get on with it in their own way. I mean, if they throw a swarm, I'll catch that. And that would be great if I'm around. Uh, and I am around all the time. <laughs> I'll catch that. But um, so if, if I find a swarm. But if they don't swarm and there weren't many bees in there and they're just happily living in there, I'm just going to let them get on with it. I'm not going to do anything different. What, do you agree with me, Cat Rita? Do you? Cat Rita says that's a good idea, Kate. <laughs> so that was an extremely good inspection as far as I can tell. It would have been great if I'd seen the Queen. Um, but never mind. Uh, I can see that she is definitely there and laying, so that's good. So today then is all about the bees. It's a beautiful day and it's only mid-afternoon, so I might get all my clothes, uh, ordinary clothes back on again now, take all of this lot off and I come and do a bit of gardening. Yeah, that's what I might do. Well, if you're not interested in bees, I'll be back with something that you might be interested in next time. Tomorrow, there won't be a, a channel video because it's the Patreon uh, live stream. It's Ask Kate Anything over on the Patreon channel. I've explained before why I do that on Patreon and not on the main channel. Uh, it, it, it works perfectly. I'm really enjoying it. All the questions have come in now and are still coming in. Still time for people to ask questions. And what I do on a Sunday uh, is collate all the questions together into sort of like themes and areas. It's tomorrow's going to be a lot about quilting because lots of the questions that people have asked me are, have been about uh, quilting. So I think we're going to have quite a quilty time of it tomorrow evening. It's going to be tomorrow evening at eight o'clock British summer time. And um, I mean, these time zones all around the world, uh, what can you do? The world's a big round thing. The time's different all over the place. But eight o'clock British summer time will be the live stream for the patrons tomorrow. So there won't be a channel video tomorrow, but I might get back to things on Monday. But for now, though, um, I'm going to say good inspection. Very happy with the way things are going. Glad I did it today. It might be turning colder later in the week. And uh, yeah, that was interesting to me. It was interesting for me to find all that out. I really enjoyed that. OK, guys. I will see you soon and uh, that will be good. Uh, in the meantime, take care. Um, don't go injecting yourself with um, disinfectant. That's a really good idea not to do that. And um, uh, <laughs> yeah, look after yourselves. Do, do better things than that. Okay, lots of love everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye now.